Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. The Roku vanity code is one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Same on iTunes. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I know from the comments here online that many of you disagree with me on this. I'm just going to lay out the argument, uh, let the chips fall where they may. Right now, many people are openly clamoring for a fight between Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. The fight has greater urgency because Mayweather has announced that he's only going to fight two more times. Right? According to rumors here online, who knows if they're true or not, right? Floyd Mayweather wants a rematch clause, right? Also, according to rumors here online, Saul Alvarez is insistent on fighting Miguel Cotto on what we know as Cinco de Mayo weekend here, a fight weekend that typically belongs to Floyd Mayweather, at least it has for the last few years, right? So... If Floyd is going to get back that date, if he's going to get back that lucrative weekend, right, then he's going to have to fight someone significant to knock a Canelo Cotto match off the spot, right? Let me say this. I think that all the public excitement right now is really missing the historical view, right? I believe it's also missing the possibility that more than one of these fighters, right, Pacquiao, Mayweather, Canelo, Cotto, is overrated and might have problems in the future against opposition not in this group, right? Understand the future, when it arrives, often looks far different than we thought it would. Right, if you look back on boxers' careers, I can tell you, because I lived during the era, that at the time it happened, few people thought the Lennox Lewis Vitaly Klitschko fight was one of the biggest fights of Lewis's career. As we look back now, it was. In fact, from the lens of today, an argument can be made it's the biggest fight of Lewis's career. Right, I would go further and say that Lewis fought three guys. Now, at the time, everyone was excited about Lewis, Mike Tyson. Now we realize Mike Tyson was badly faded by the time he fought Lennox Lewis. Right, the two biggest guys Lewis fought, in my opinion, were Evander Holyfield and Vitaly Klitschko. I'm just here to tell you that at the time it was unclear well let's fast forward to the present right let me say this and the press isn't looking at this correctly right understand Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather are not equal right now in terms of titles they simply aren't right understand that while Manny I believe holds a share of the welterweight title. Understand that Floyd right now is both the welter and the junior middle weight champions. In other words, Floyd holds the belts at 147 and 154. Now just close your eyes and ask yourself the next question. Who in boxing right now holds three belts at the same time in three different weight classes. If the answer is no one, if that's a mountain that hasn't been climbed for quite some time, for several years, if that's a distinction no one else has, then in my opinion, that's a distinction Floyd Mayweather should pursue. 
right? Understand that's what legacy is all about. Now, I would argue that 10 years from now, as someone remembers the Mayweather legacy, if there's ever a time where Floyd Mayweather pulls belts in three different weight classes at the same time, that that accomplishment is going to be in the first paragraph of whatever biography is written about Floyd Mayweather. Whatever Floyd did in the past, all the different titles in the different weight classes, right? If he holds three at the same time, if he does what Henry Armstrong did, generations ago right and i'll agree with armstrong there were fewer weight classes okay fair enough but if he gets the third belt simultaneously that'll far exceed anything he does in a fight against manny pacquiao it'll far exceed it right let me also point out, too, there's an added wrinkle to the story. Could you imagine any fighter retiring while holding three different weight class titles? If a fighter wants to make the case that he's the greatest of all time, whatever the rest of us believe, if a fighter wants to say, I've done the work, here is the resume. Could there possibly be a more powerful resume than walking away from the sport with titles in three different weight classes at the same time? Think about it. He would leave the sport and we would go through a period of years where different men in these weight classes would be pursuing the titles held by Floyd Mayweather. Right? Think about it. How could someone possibly match that record? A guy leaving the sport with three titles at the same time in three different weight classes. Understand, Henry Armstrong did it in his prime. Here, you'd be talking about a guy at the end of his career. Right? Just plug in any name in history. Could you imagine Ray Leonard walking away with the welterweight, junior middleweight, and middleweight titles, then saying bye to the sport with an unbeaten record and sailing into the sunset? How would you exclude a guy like that from a conversation on whether he's the greatest ever. Now let me say this, life's unfair. Let me back up a bit. Why is the Lennox Lewis, Vitaly Klitschko fight really one of the major fights of the last 40 years, easily? It's because of what Vitaly Klitschko did after that fight. Right? You look back on that fight and you say, wow, you know, Vitaly goes on to hold the belt for years. Then you think to yourself, whoa, how would he have done against the all-time greats? Then you realize, hey, you know what? He did fight Lennox Lewis. Then you go back, you look at a film of the fight, and you see two great fighters actually trading punches. What a guy does after his fight, after the big night with you, right, does shine a light retroactively on how we remember that big night, doesn't it? So let's look at the possibility of Floyd. Again, some of the names being bandied about. Manny Pacquiao. Understand that Manny Pacquiao, like Floyd, is in his mid-30s. 
right? Manny Pacquiao is no longer prime Manny Pacquiao. By that I mean if Manny Pacquiao, when he was 30, were to fight Manny Pacquiao today, I'd take the 30-year-old. Understand that since Manny Pacquiao bursts on the scene, and let's be clear here, by the time he reaches the public imagination in the United States, Pacquiao had already lost. Go back in his history and look at the Tory Alba fight. Understand, after he bursts on the world scene, after he gets with American trainer Freddie Roach. Understand that Pacquiao has lost three times, right? Three different men. The Eric Morales fight, the first fight, I understand Pacquiao later revenged it. But at a minimum, the first fight, the view isn't that Pacquiao got robbed. The concession is that that's a competitive fight. El Terrible gets the decision in that first fight. Right? Then we have years later, but recently, right, within the last four years, we have the Timothy Bradley fight. Now I understand that fight's controversial. Right? Let's just agree that Bradley goes the distance. Let's just agree that there are no knockdowns in the fight. None. Right? Pacquiao loses that fight. Okay, fair enough. We get to the one Manuel Marquez fight. There's no doubt about that one. Right? Pacquiao gets stopped in that fight. Right? For me, a big key, as I've said in countless other videos, is the fact that when Pacquiao hits the canvas, it's the second time in that fight he's hit the canvas. If Pacquiao were 30 years old, that would raise eyebrows. We'd say, wow, what's going on? But because of the stature right now, we overlook the first knockdown, and the folklore is that Pacquiao was on his way to winning that fight when he gets drilled and knocked out the second time in the fight. Well, understand... There's a risk, isn't there? There's a big risk, especially given the guys around him in the sport, namely guys like Terence Crawford, Amir Khan. There's a risk that Pacquiao could lose again, right? We all understand that. Father Time eventually is going to beat everyone. Pacquiao's already close to Floyd in age. There's wear on the tire. I encourage people to look at Bernard Hopkins' comments about Manny Pacquiao after Pacquiao gets knocked out by Juan Manuel Marquez. Right? Those are the kind of knockouts that age you. Right? Understand, too. Pacquiao hasn't stopped anyone inside the distance, and double-check me on this, since stopping Ricky Hatton years ago. Research that fight. It's farther back than you think. Understand, Ricky Hatton has been retired now for some time. Right? Right? So, the point is simply this. If I'm Floyd Mayweather, right, and I'm thinking about who to fight next, I'd have a very hard time overlooking the historical opportunity. How many people have this opportunity to wear three belts in three different weight classes simultaneously? If Floyd were to fight Cotto, and, Flo and if Floyd were to beat Miguel Cotto, and if he were to get that distinction, I'm just telling you whatever else happened in Floyd's career, that distinction would be mentioned in the first paragraph of any Mayweather biography 
if you're comparing Mayweather to anyone in history, let's say boxing historians sit there and say, let's compare Floyd to the best that there was. And let's say they bring out the man his uncle Roger feels is the greatest of all time, Sugar Ray Robinson. Right? Ray Robinson, toward the end of his career, lost quite a bit. Hung around the sport too long. Right? Just look up his career. As you're making the comparison, the Mayweather story, if Mayweather's successful against Miguel Cotto, would start with when Floyd walked away from the sport. Forget opinions on whether he was the top pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sport at the time he walked away. Before we look at the opinions, before we look at the figure skating scorecards, just know that when he walked away, he had titles in three different weight classes at the same time. When he left, Welter, junior middle and middleweight, had to come up with new champions. Think about that. I believe that distinction is much more mind-blowing than an in-the-moment right, accomplishment of beating Manny Pacquiao. Let me talk about Miguel Cotto for a second, too. Because I believe this really needs to be discussed. Now, I know there are many Saul Alvarez fans out there. I know it. I know he's very popular. I understand that when he's fighting even formidable opposition, Eris Landy Lara, Austin Trout, right? Formidable opposition. I know that the crowds for both of those fights were rooting for Canelo. You don't have to believe me. Just go back and look at the tape of the fight. Right? Now, my point is simply this. I know we say Canelo only lost to one fighter. Floyd Mayweather. I encourage you to go back and look at the films of the two fights I just mentioned. I think an argument can be made that Canelo has lost to three men. Right? Trout, Mayweather, and Lara. Now, I want you to look closely at Saul Alvarez. I know he's younger than Miguel Cotto. No question about it. Is he the athlete that Miguel Cotto is? Doesn't he look a little bit more stiff to you in the ring than Miguel Cotto? Now understand, neither Canelo nor Cotto is big for middleweight. Right? They're not. Right? They're not David Lemieux, for example. They're not big for a middleweight in terms of just sheer size. Right? Neither of them is going to be confused for Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. at 160 pounds in terms of size. Right? When Chavez Jr. was in the weight class. Right? Well, the point is this. If I'm Cotto, because this isn't all about Mayweather, I believe Cotto's a future Hall of Famer. Right? If I'm Cotto and I'm concerned with my legacy, what's going to help my legacy more? Beating Canelo, who's undersized and who's slower than Cotto, at 160, a weight class where Canelo might not survive. Understand, Canelo has a big punch at 154. He doesn't have the longest reach. At 160, guys like Peter Quillen, for example, big for 160, could keep him at the end of a jab. Couldn't he? Right? Just ask yourself, who else at 160 could Canelo be? If Canelo gets in the ring against Hassan and Jikum, does he have the foot speed to keep up with Hassan and Jikum? Aren't we right now, at this stage of Canelo's career, seeing the very best of Canelo? 
right? If you're a boxer puncher without a lot of foot speed, without a lot of reach, without a lot of flexibility, how are you going to beat some of the guys at 160? There's a fight happening. Matt Karabov against Andy Lee. Right? Look at the size of both of those guys. Just Google Matt Karabov's experience at middle. It's extensive. Right? Amateurs, pros. Right? These are physically bigger men than Canelo. Right? Trust me, they have faced bigger punchers than Canelo. Andy Lee famously fought Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Now, if I'm Miguel Cotto, understand, in the moment, we're touting Saul Alvarez. In fact, we're touting him at middleweight, a division where he hasn't fought. Now, if I'm Cotto, I have to ask myself, which accomplishment is going to bring me back more 10 years from now? Beating Floyd Mayweather, an unbeaten fighter, guy holding two belts already, one of the more memorable fights of my career, right? The first time the two guys fought. Beating Mayweather or beating Saul Alvarez. If you were to close your eyes right now and vote, for who has had the better career, Mayweather or Saul Alvarez, who do you vote for? If you were to close your eyes and ask yourself, who's doing better right now in the sport? Mayweather, a guy holding two belts, or Saul Alvarez, who would you vote for? Legacy-wise, what's the bigger fight for Miguel Cotto? Now keep in mind, as I like to say, money does matter. This is professional prize fighting. Right? If I'm Cotto, I'd want to hear that I'm getting at least as much money for both options. So this way I can take money out of the equation. I can say, okay, well, I'm financially compensated whether I fight fighter A or fighter B. Right? So now we can move on to other considerations. Right? Like legacy. Right? Like promotional billing, etc. Right? Let me just say this. If you think it through, I think Mayweather Cotto would make more sense 10 years from now on a host of levels, namely legacy, than would Canelo Cotto and Mayweather Pacquiao. Right now, that's how I see it. Let me hear how you see it. As I like to say, you know, I understand that the Mayweather Pacquiao matchup morning group is the most vocal out there. But I can tell you just by reading the comments to all of these boxing videos, not just mine, but those of other people here on YouTube, that there are other groups. Right, I can tell you there's a Mayweather Amir Khan group out there. Right, people who think Khan's length and hand speed would give Mayweather problems. That's if, when I say if, Khan gets by Devin Alexander, a fight I think is very dangerous. Right, understand too, you have some other groups. There's a Mayweather Arislandi Lara group out there. There are people looking at 160. Obviously, there's a Mayweather, Janady Golovkin group out there. Right? My point to you, though, is Mayweather Cotto is fascinating because, quite frankly, Amir Khan in the Hall of Fame, he hasn't earned it yet. I would argue that Miguel Cotto has. Right? I would argue that Miguel Cotto is already a Hall of Famer. Right? In other words, Mayweather doesn't have to guess on whether this fight would be viewed as historical because Miguel Cotto has already had a historical career. I believe Cotto has had titles now in something like four different weight classes. Think about it. Right? So, let me point out 
Mayweather has a chance to fight two different Hall of Famers. Only one of these Hall of Famers gives him the chance, the opportunity, to get a third belt at the same time. For those reasons, I think Mayweather should fight Cotto next. If Cotto is willing, it takes two to dance. If Cotto wants to fight Canelo, and I believe Cotto wins that fight, then hey, it's his career, it's his life, it's his legacy. He makes his decisions. Right? But if Cotto's on the fence and he's thinking about his own reputation, he's thinking about avenging an earlier loss. He's thinking about how his game has grown since then. He wasn't with Freddie Roach for the first fight. If he's having flashbacks on things in that first fight that he believes he could have done differently, if he's looking for an opponent who brings box office to the table, then I think Floyd Mayweather as an opponent makes a lot of sense. Well, that's how I see it. The chips will fall one way or the other, right? We'll have a big boxing announcement soon, and we'll find out who Mayweather's next opponent is. We'll find out who Cotto's next opponent is, right? But all I'm saying is I hope these men think in terms of their legacies down the road. I hope Mayweather understands the historical opportunity that he has right here at this stage of his career right don't get fooled by in the moment because I'm telling you folks the moment changes as you look in the rearview mirror right to me the biggest heavyweight fight of I'd say since the 70s in my opinion is uh, let me let me back up I'll say since 1990, is Lennox Lewis against Vitaly Klitschko. It's a feather in Lewis's cap. It's a big feather. That's a rematch Vitaly Klitschko wanted all the way up until the day he quit the sport. In fact, I'm sure he still wants that rematch. At the time, we didn't know it. Let's not make that mistake again. I hope Floyd goes for history, not personality, right? I hope Floyd looks at the middleweight championship and says, hey, I've climbed many mountains. I haven't climbed this one, right? I'm hoping Cotto looks at his resume and says, you know what? When I lost to Antonio Margarito, I knew that I needed that rematch. I knew it. I need to avenge my loss to Floyd Mayweather. Let's hope that fight happens. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. If there are other people that you feel Floyd should fight, right? And I know I'm a big Keith Thurman fan. I think Thurman beats Leonard Bundu, right? But if it's Keith Thurman or others, and if you feel that that fight would have historical implications, right? And keep in mind, since Mayweather has belts in more than one weight class, you can literally talk about more than one weight class, right? Understand, there's another intriguing matchup for Mayweather. Anthony Mundine, right? I, I need to have people understand that Mundine held the belt for multiple defenses at 168. He's now Floyd's mandatory at 154. Right? If there are other fighters you feel might give Floyd that boost in terms of legacy, list them here in the comment section to this video and let's talk about it. Thanks for stopping by.